Hey guys, and welcome back to CanCode. Today, I'm going to do a super easy tutorial on how you can make a shooter game on Scratch. So let's get into it. So we're going to start by clicking this Create button up here, and that's going to bring us to a blank new project. Okay, now that we're up here, we can name our game. Yes, I have 36 untitled projects, I guess. I'm just going to name mine Scratch Shooter Game. Okay, so... Uh, this is going to be a one player one, I have made a long time ago on another account how to make a two player one, it was not very good. So right now I'm going to teach you a very easy way to make a one player one, where bad guys come off the screen and try and get you. Fun, right? Alright, so let's change the sprite name to player, because this is going to be our player. And we have the cat here, but we can change this to whatever we want. Um, and I'm going to drop myself, so I'm going to go to the costumes right here. We can delete the second costume because we only need one. And then we're going to highlight all of this cat like this with the cursor, and we're going to click delete. Now we can make our player. Now this right here, this little center thing here, is the center of all of the code here, and inside here, this box, is the box of our template, or whatever this is here. So we're going to zoom in, and we're going to make our player. So I'm going to make a circle, because I'm going to do this from the top view. Uh, and I'll make him red. Maybe a little... Uh, slightly brighter, or less saturated. We're going to make a circle, and one way to make a perfect circle instead of just guessing is you can hold down shift, and as you do that, it makes a perfect circle. So you can make this however big we want, and that's a little bit too small for me, so I'm going to drag one of the corners outwards, and it's going to make a little bit bigger. Eh, I'll make it a little smaller, really, kind of however you want. I mean, that's pretty good for me. Now I also want an outline. I'm going to have an outline be black, so I'm going to click this outline and make it black like this. Then I'm going to bring up the, uh, the thickness and it will make a circle. Now we can make this go right into the center by, see this little um, plus sign thing here. We're going to make it right, put it right in the center here and it's going to kind of snap into place right on the center. And we want that uh, because it's going to make the game a lot easier code so what we're gonna do now is we're going to I'm gonna add little arms and have a little gun in it uh, but one thing that you can make the top look a little bit cooler is if you go to the fill while this is selected you can kind of click something like this and then change it to a little bit of a lighter color or whatever and it kind of fades into that which is really cool so now when we make our gun we want the gun to be pointing to the right and the reason why is because Scratch just has everything that you're pointing it to the right. So, like, all the code blocks are going to be assuming that your player is pointing to the right. I don't know why, it's just how Scratch is designed, so you kind of just got to get used to that. I'm going to click this little line thing. It has our little outline, and I'm going to uh, bring this out like this. And actually, most people are right-handed, so I'm going to have it actually more like this. And have this arm kind of going like that. So now the gun's going to be coming out on the right side, so we're kind of looking down the scope on the right. Okay, this is a pretty nice player. So let's code him. So we're going to go to the code. And we're going to make the player start over on this side of the screen. We want the Y to be the same, but we can change the X to maybe like minus 200. Oops, not 2,000. And that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit less. Now that's good. Right there. Minus 180 as the X and Y will be 0. Now you can see this go to block here. It's going to go to the same position that it's at right now. Minus 180, 0. And that's just a cool thing that Scratch added. Now we're going to have our events when flag clicked, and then we're going to go to it. So when wherever this guy is, we'll put him over here. When we click the flag, he'll always start right there, which is what we want. Now we also want to make the direction that the gun is pointing to the right. So if we go to the motion tab, we can scroll down until we find um, point in direction 90. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know why I couldn't find that. So point direction 90. And like I said, it's everything is going to assume you're going to the 90 position. So we're just going to put that there. If we pointed it a little more down and then we click the flag, he'd be pointing down in the same direction that this arrow is pointing. 
So we're just going to put it at 90 degrees. And when we click the flag, it'll just be pointing to the right. So now what we're going to do is when we click the flag, we want the player to be pointing towards our mouse. So how we're going to do this is we're going to go to the control tab and grab a forever loop after we do the move to minus 180 uh, y0 and then point in direction 90. After that, it's going to forever do it inside of here. And what do we want to do inside of here? Well, we want it to point towards our mouse. So what we can do is we can point towards right here, like this block here, and it already has mouse pointer. We can also select other sprites, but we don't have any other sprites, so we're just going to have mouse pointer right now. So now when we click the flag, he will always be pointing towards our mouse, which is really cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when we turn the arrow keys, he moves. So what we'll do is we'll add a couple of if statements. So this is going to be an if that we're going to put after the mouse pointer. And it's going to say, if the key up arrow is pressed, then when we press the up arrow, it's going to move forward, wherever our direction of our mouse is. So when we uh, do that, we're going to have move when we, when we press the up arrow. It'll move maybe five steps. We'll see what happens here. So now it's pointing towards our mouse, and when we press the up arrow, it moves towards our mouse in about this direction, which is pretty cool. But what if we want him to make go backwards? Well, what we can do is we can duplicate this uh, if statement here. We can change the up arrow to down arrow and change the move from five steps to minus five steps. Now, when we put this in after the up arrow block, then when we start the flag, we press forward and it goes fo towards our mouse and we press backwards, it goes away from our mouse. Which is pretty cool. Now, what if we want to press the right and left arrow keys and it goes around our mouse? So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate both of these blocks here and we're going to change them to right arrow and left arrow. Now we're going to get rid of these move blocks because that's not what we're going to do now. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to turn when we, turn, uh, when we use the right arrow, it's going to turn to the right. 90 degrees it's going to move a little bit we'll say five steps and then that's it okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to for the left arrow we're going to turn the other direction left 90 degrees and then we're going to move five steps all right now let's put this in after the down arrow and let's try this so we go forward backward right and left okay so that's okay but you can see that when we press the right arrow it goes to the right and it points to the right we don't want it to point to the right we only want it to go to the right so what can we do to stop this well right now it's turning 90 degrees and then after it does that it's going to point towards the mouse pointer afterwards with these forever loops they don't happen instantly they actually have a little bit of time that is wasted when it goes from the bottom to the top. So it's pointing to the mouse pointer, but then when we're holding down the right arrow, it's turning 90 degrees to the right. Then it's gonna wait a little bit at the bottom and it's gonna stay pointing to the right. Now it's gonna come back up and point towards the mouse pointer, but we won't even see it because it's gonna instantly be turning to the right again. So what we have to do is we have to turn it back to the left again, right after it turns to the right. So I just duplicated this one that turns to the left 90 degrees. We're going to get rid of this move block and put it right at the end. So it's going to turn 90 degrees, it's going to move a little bit, and then it's going to turn back 90 degrees. Now we can do the same for the left arrow. We're going to turn right 90 degrees right after it turns to the left. Now we can go forward, backward, and you press the right arrow, it just goes around the mouse like this. It goes wider circles when our mouse is further away, but when our mouse is closer, it does smaller circles. And the left arrow works too. That's pretty cool. That's all I have for this video. In the next video, we're going to be going over bullets, which is going to be pretty cool. So stay tuned for that one. I'll see you next time. Hey, uh, you know, if you want, you can subscribe or subscribe to my other account, CFOP Cubing, or you could. Follow me on Scratch. I'm CanCode. Dashes on both sides. Alright, goodbye.